This is Jay Richards at the COSM 2019 conference with the Discovery Institute, and I'm joined by Bill Dembski, who probably needs no introduction. Bill and I met something like 25 years ago, it I realized, at this conference in the, the mid-90s, in any case, right? Princeton Theological Seminary doing a Schleiermacher seminar. doctoral Is seminar. That's right, <laughs> strangely, which I still remember, yeah, yeah. haven't yeah, managed to forget it. That, yeah. um, and so you've been a you're founding senior fellow at the Discovery Institute. Right. In fact, I really came to Discovery Institute in large you're, part you're, because you're, of you. You're almost founding, yeah. I think it was 98, yeah. I was 96. Yeah, that's right, yeah. and I started, came here yeah. in 98. Um, and you've done a bunch of things. Obviously, you've written a, a wide range of books. You have been a businessman and entrepreneur for many years. You're now actually on the board right. uh, of Discovery. I, I, I don't get there nearly as much as I'd <laughs> like, but I, I hope next year to have more time for Terrific. travel. So Terrific. Terrific. Get out here more frequently. Well, you, you, of course, we're at this tech conference, and you talked yesterday uh, about this idea for a kind of a purely informational type of money, and it was really a thought experiment having to do with blockchain. I mean, how would you right. sort of distill your basic idea? Yeah. I mean, the, the, I had this idea back about 10 years ago, right when Bitcoin was yeah. coming out. And I saw Bitcoin at the time, and I never had a good feeling about it. Mm -hmm. the, the idea of the mining there, it seemed highly artificial. Uh, just the amount of energy that you had to throw at it forever decreasing yeah. amounts of Bitcoin. Right. It just seemed that there were lots of problems with it. But beyond that, it still seemed that you were buying into a pretty extensive infrastructure. Uh, you couldn't. There, there was still a fair amount of centralization going on there. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I really did in this talk was present a thought experiment and what, what would be, mathematically speaking, the least, cent least centralized possible right. currency. And so what uh, my springboard into this was to pose a question, is a DIY informational mint possible? Mint mm. being not the things you pop sure. in your mouth, but uh, a way, you know, what the, the place where you make money mm -hmm. and uh, or cr create money or manufacture it. So, right. uh, so it seemed to me in the history of money that when there were gold coins, you could, as a private party, get the, co get the gold out of the ground, purify it to government standards, and then get a coining press and build that, make those coins in a way that would be indistinguishable from government coin, but that also would not provide an insult to the economy. It's hmm. not that you'd be counterfeiting in the sense that you would if you were, had a printing press. Right. So you wouldn't be uh, artificially inflating the money supply. There would be all these constraints on proliferation of currency, which you want. You, mm -hmm. know, you don't want things just going crazy. So question then was, well, could you have something comparable in a purely informational world? Uh, can you, as a lone individual, create currency right. that is going to uh, then be created by the individual, but will have legitimacy? You know, that could, could count, that will have intrinsic value rather than depending on some sort of fiat uh, authority trust, mm -hmm. you know. And so that was, that was the thought experiment. And it, uh, it uses uh, so, uh, some insights from Bitcoin, but I think it goes, goes much further. So I need a blockchain. Right. I need uh, computation to be scarce. Uh, and uh, when I get those get certain minimal assumptions, mm -hmm. uh, I need to have hashing. Uh, where you've got these one-way functions that really mix things right. up. And if I've got public key cryptography, it seems I can get a system that's very minimal infrastructure. I just need a blockchain that keeps uh, uh, the blocks in an order, no backdating. Okay, that's, so that's, that's the, the problem. Key. That's right. That's key. You can't backdate yep. because it's pure information. Information is basically intellectual property. So mm -hmm. the first time it appears, that's where you can claim ownership. When I do that, I can get an informational currency where if computation is a scarce resource, so you don't have infinite computation. So this, lim this is the limit then, is ultimately yeah, it, it's going to be computation it, still. So you got it, and, and so then you could, as it were, cash it out yes. as, uh, as hashes, count the number of hashes, and you can do this in a way where there's a proof of work of the individual, tied to the individual, using hashes, using public key cryptography. It's interesting, public key cryptography, what it do isn't really doing in my system mm -hmm. is encrypting and decrypting messages. What it's doing is identifying somebody and then allowing Uniquely. signatures. Okay. You know? And then so that you, you know you're dealing with the person, there's verification yep. of uh, the person being, or the agent being the one associated with that public key, private key. The private key is always gonna be kept private. Sure. But, uh, but the thing is, that private key and the public key, 
you know, there can be a lot of anonymity with that. Mm -hmm. And I, I like anonymity. Yeah, so, so I, you I, and George Gilderick seem yeah. to disagree on this. Well, you know, I, I do, but you know, for me, it's there's this old stay scale cartoon where you have this bank robber, he goes into the bank, you know, and he's running away, uh, or, or, or he's in there, yeah. and then there's another guy who's the bank, or a banker, government guy, who's got all this money and looks and walking out and says, amateur, you know? Yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> for me, it's, it's like, you know, the, the government, you know, people, they're, they're the ones who need the most watching, you know? Yeah. They're, they're the ones who, in a sense, can legitimize uh, criminality yeah. in a way that I think the ordinary criminal can't. So I'm, I'm less concerned about this proposal leading to underground economies yeah. with criminals going off. I mean, I think there's always, always that dangers. That exists anyway you know, with cash. Dangers yeah. are going to always be there. Right. Technologies are always going to be abused. But it seems to me the, the greater threat is the big brother, the mm -hmm. centralization. I mean, when I, at this conference, when I hear about the Internet of Things, that, that, that's to me nightmarish <laughs> where everything, you know, I mean, Everything the, the, records. Everything. What you're doing. The, the, this one fellow is saying, you know, if we could have a fork so we can keep track of how much food you're putting in your mouth, you know, it's like, well, have enough discipline so you don't have to do that. But, <laughs> right. you know, then if somebody is tracking that, then there can be a value judgment. Oh, you're moving that fork too much. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Someone in the Department of Health and Human Services is tracking so, your caloric you know, intake. So it's, uh, you know, yeah. I, it's, so how, do we put a premium on freedom or mm -hmm. do we? put a premium on some centralizing authorities' view of what's the good right. for us. And I don't trust the centralizing authorities. And so this, so this is a sort of virtue of this yeah. proposal, is it's much more genuinely decentralized. That's, so uh, it's it's trying to push the, the decentralization as far yeah. as possible. And I think, and it's, it's, it's almost, I mean, there's a mathematics that carries you through. If information, if you're going to claim ownership of it, it's got to be something like this. And then if that, uh, item of information is going to count as currency, mm -hmm. it seems it's going to have to be something like this. It's going to have to be some sort of proof of work tied to the individual that you get into the blockchain. Uh, and it, but th this blockchain has, it's very minimal. You right. know, it's that, that's the point. It's not that something that's going to require the, massive amounts of energy. It, that, that sort it, of it, you know, and, and I think the rules point. will be set in advance. There'll be, have to be some automated uh, bookkeeping, but it's not the sort of peer-to-peer -peer networks where you're making up rules as you go along. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh well, let's let's see. We didn't like the way this worked out, so let's have a hard fork here. You mm -hmm. know, and then the rest of the currency. You know, you thought you maybe got some bitcoins, but <laughs> no, we're not going to give you no, those. Change the rules. You know, so yeah. I think that's that's the danger there. Okay. In, in, in my view, right? You know, I mean, there. You know, but it's it's interesting. There's a I've I've seen at this conference a, a religious impulse. You know, yes. of like you know. Either Bitcoin is the thing or gold is the thing. Absolutely. You know? And for me, I tend to be much more of a pragmatist, but, yes. uh, but there are certain uh, non-negotiables for me. And you know, I think freedom of thought and expression, freedom of being able to live, live your life as you Absolutely. see, you know, by, live, live by your conscience. And it seems that there are lots of forces that are moving against that. Yes. And, um, you know, and historically, you know, I think I mean, governments love monopoly. Mm -hmm. They love to control currency. And it seems to me there's, uh, there are good reasons to think that currency does not need to be a governmental yeah. entity. Hong Kong seems to work pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. so I want to I switch to yeah. this abiding theme of the conference. And of course, the, it's in the name of the Bradley yeah. Center, right, uh, yeah. for natural and artificial intelligence right. uh, here at Discovery. But um, this is a kind of abiding theme and a point of disagreement, clearly, among the, the participants of the conference. But I mean, how yeah. would you distill what is the kind of, if there is a key difference or the key difference between nat natural and artificial intelligence, what is it? What's the, wh where's the yeah. cleavage? Well, I, I think you said it today. I mean, there's, there's a metaphysical issue. What, mm -hmm. is, what is the nature of, of intelligence, you know? And us, I mean, we're humans are certainly, yeah. you know, we're intelligent beings. Are we, do we embody something that is not, uh, not is more than a machine, mm -hmm. or, or, or actually qualitatively different yes. from a machine, I think is what we would want to say. And, you know, I, I think if we come at this as Christians or theists, yeah. you know, uh, we're made in the image of God. Is God a machine? You know, <laughs> You're right. I mean, God is immaterial. No. I mean, I think you, didn't you do your work on yes. divine simplicity? You know, yeah. so, so it's, uh, so, you know, I think there's, there's that. So if we come at it from certain philosophical and metaphysical principles, you know, I, I think we'd, we'd say, no, this can't be. Mm -hmm. But then I think there, there are more practical scientific concerns about, right. you know, what's, you know, what are, are there any inherent limits to what computation can do? Uh, what, is, what are the sorts of things we do? I mean, one of my favorite quotes in this, I, I don't know it off 
hand in verbatim, but it was actually from Descartes' On Method, where he says yeah. there's a certain nimbleness to intelligence that machines can never have. They're yeah. always going to be adaptive. And this yeah. is, I thought, George Montagnez yes. said it perfectly. You know, there's always these biases. You know, um, I think Arnold Toynbee said there's there's no tool that works for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, tools have to be adapted. Yeah. These machines are tools. They have to be adapted to solve certain problems. But there's this infinite malleability, it seems, that there is uh, nimbleness to intelligence, which are absent from machines. Yeah. You know, and I think we, we see it. I mean, you know, I look at uh, my Siri, you know, and, uh, you, know, I, I, <laughs> or I, you know, I do my text, and then the next word is recommended. You know, and it's, it's, it's way off yeah. so often. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's that we have uh, the, the creativity, the ability to use language mm -hmm. to, and, and then not just use language to convey meaning, but I mean, the, the plays on words, the poetry, all yes. of these things. I mean, it's, it's, it seems that this goes so far beyond anything that, that machines are capable of. So I've, uh, but you know, I, I think there are, there are lots of lines of evidence. I know uh, Penrose was going, mm -hmm. doing a Godelian type yeah. move against it. I mean, what, one thing for me that's, uh, in, which didn't come out today in the conversation was, you know, there's, uh, Bob was talking about, well, there are things that are non-algorithmic, and that's yes. true, okay? And, and if, if we can do things that are non-algorithmic, then we're not computers, right. you know, I mean, that's, that's clear. There's, it seems that we're throwing lots and lots of computation at things these days, and we're, we're mm -hmm. able to keep, Moore's Law seems to keep going, but right. at some point, we are gonna run into a limit. And the interesting thing is, you know, if you think about search, you know, mm -hmm. if you're doing a blind search, let's say you have two to the M things that you're searching, okay? Right. Now, if you go two to the M plus one, okay, you have to double your comp computing power mm -hmm. just to do a, a brute force search of that space. Right. So every time you double, you know, the, the search space, you double the computing or power that you need. Right. Now the thing is, you, f you can get problems very quickly, mm -hmm. you know, if uh, there's this whole NP completeness yeah. stuff, where, you know, you've got a traveling salesperson problem, you know, I think, I'm not sure what it is, if you get up to 500, it's probably way below that I'm even. I'm sure it is. You know, then you're not solving it. No. So there, you know, so are there, you know, it could well be that there, there are just lots of problems that, uh, you know, throwing, computational resources is just not going to get you anywhere. It. Yeah. You know, so, but it seems that we can get to places, yes. you know, but it seems also the, the sorts of examples that keep coming up are, you know, Go, Chess, yes. you know, these, these sort of constrained, They're very mathematical. They're biased at the very beginning and then they get to know, search several hundred million times, right, yeah. to sort of run this out. So, Child needs to see about 10 cats and then she recognizes a cat, right? Yeah. <laughs> Machines yeah. are doing that. Yeah, they show 20 million images, yeah. you know, they get pretty close. Yeah. So something I think that, different. That, that, that's, that's well put. So, you know, so it's, uh, you know, and I think there's also a, a problem that I, I find is, uh, is what, I, what I call a file drawer effect. You mm -hmm. know, so you, you, you train a machine, you know, to then, uh, figure out what's the next word to get to extract some sort of meaningful sentence or to compose some some language uh, about some text that they've that the machine has been exposed to and you get something that looks oh this this is interesting this is kind of yeah, I mean almost it might be insightful or mm -hmm. so but then you ask you know for all the time all the things that the machine has generated in response to text you know that was called by yeah. Some AI aficionado who's <laughs> trying to right. make the machine look look really good. Smart. So 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 give me all the boners, all yeah. the stupid things that the right. machine does, all the stupid things I see Siri doing <laughs> that end up in the file drawer, which you don't put up no, at one right. of these presentations. Yeah, you know. And uh, the thing is, those sorts of embarrassments, humans aren't going to do those. No. You know? Yeah, and this is the stuff that it's always offsite, you know. And yeah. so this is—I mean, it is fundamentally. I think they're both uh, sort of empirical and pragmatic arguments here, but they're also these metaphysical arguments that are always just kind of under yeah. the surface in these discussions, for sure. Yeah. Bill, good to see you. Yeah. Thanks <laughs> it's for really joining. Fun. Us. We Absolutely. need to do this more often. Definitely. Good yeah. to see you. Right, good. This is Jay Richards at Cosm 2019.